Hey guys, what up? Rogues here and yesterday I tweeted something about the Asian version of Critical Ops which is called Critical Ops Reloaded. Now, quick background info. Critical Force, the company that actually makes Critical Ops received an investment two years ago of around 4.6 million dollars and they actually partnered with a South Korean game developer called NHN Entertainment. Now, NHN Entertainment probably sees Critical Ops as a game with a bright future ahead and they, yeah, they stepped into the mobile gaming with this deal and I don't know anything about the deal of course but after this week it kind of makes sense that Critical Force and NHN uh, work together on the Asian version and yeah Critical Force probably gave all the assets to the South Korean company allowing them to modify things to their liking and make it ready for a public game for Asia. Now in case you didn't know the gaming scene in Asia is huge and much bigger than the western countries combined. People spend more time and money in Asia compared to the other countries and esports is actually really big over there. League of Legends for example can easily reach 10 million viewers at the same moment during a final match or something. So yeah overall it's a really interesting interesting business there and if you look at the Asian version of Critical Ops you can see a few similarities but it actually really looks different as well at the same time. It's still in closed beta meaning that it's not accessible for public unless you've applied for testing and it's only for Asian countries of course. So don't try to actually apply for it if you're from uh, Europe for example because you're probably gonna have a shitty ping. And as you can see the game already looks different than the western version of Critical Ops and this has probably to do with a few cultural differences between Asia and other continents. Now Asian games in general look, just look more cartoonish and colorful if you didn't know. Uh, the user interface and design for example. Um, also look a bit different as you can tell it looks way cleaner and less cluttered than the western version it's really basic with not a lot of details and yeah pretty simple now at the top bar you can see something that reminds me a lot of Mother Combat 5 when they turned into a pay to win game that's actually the moment when a lot of uh, players stop playing simply because western countries don't like to pay to win it in my opinion it's actually not really fair uh, since not everyone has the same amount of money to upgrade their stuff but in Asian countries it's more accepted, games rely more on the pay to win aspects than the western countries. It's a pretty interesting subject why pay to win is more accepted in Asia but it's a bit too long to talk about. Let me put it like this, western countries actually play more to enjoy games and have some fun and uh, we actually think it's fair if everyone can uh, achieve the same stuff without paying but Asian countries actually play to win and they also gain way more than Western countries and Asian games have way more options for uh, microtransactions for example you can buy this and you gain more levels or skins and you become stronger and yeah some people even spend thousands and a lot of money on those games uh, simply because they want to be the best but yeah if that's what they want to do yeah why not I mean who am I to say that they are not allowed to but personally I have mixed feelings about the Asian version I do like the loading screen for example but I don't like the main menu also the in-game buttons don't have to be colorful for me but they can be simple and gray like we have in the western version and the Asian developers probably know what they're doing since the games are actually a bit different than in western countries and the standards are also different over there I do like the in-game bar showing the colors of the counter terrorists and terrorists it looks pretty clear and some other details like the ammo bar that's something I'd like to see in the regular version another thing I really like to see in the Asian version is the scoreboard which is obviously unfinished just like the rest but imagine if we would have something similar as well where you could actually upload your own image in the game and actually see it if you press on the scoreboard something like CSGO for example another thing I really like about the Asian version is the part where you select your team it looks really cool in my opinion pretty simple you see a counter terrorist model and a terrorist model and yeah you can simply choose one of them now the most interesting part about the Asian version is that actually has a practice mode and this is really nice to see because you can actually train your aim and play against a the computer they're pretty bad at the moment as you can see but that's actually a good way to train your aim without dying constantly i don't know if you can change the difficulty but i would actually like to see a map as well where the enemy is just standing still and where you can really train your aim and reflect i hope the developers are going to add this so yeah that was it for today's video i hope you like to see the first footage of the asian critical ops version Thank you Ash for landing the video and make sure to subscribe and like if you have already and as always see you guys in the next one.